Hi book friends, I'm Erin, and this is Erin Go Read. Today is a bit of a bittersweet book haul. Now I recently posted my spring book haul of all the books that I had acquired over the last few months, and I did not anticipate doing a book haul so soon. But uh, Dimple Records and Books in my area is one of our only local family-owned independent uh, bookstores. I actually used to work at the record store about 12 years ago. I was actually there at work when I got the phone call about my husband uh, being injured. So <clears throat> there's quite a sentimental uh, attachment I have to Dimple Records um, due to the injury and then also just because um, I've grown up going to Dimple Records. Um, and they uh, several years ago, they started carrying books as well, and the owners are now retiring. And just due to the economic climate, the son has decided to, rather than take over the business, uh, to go ahead and close out the business. And so I had to use up all of my store credit. So as it's a used, used book store, you could turn in books for store credit. And so I had it was like 72 or 83 dollars in store credit that i needed to use up so i was purchasing used books which were now discounted 30 percent so i have a good amount of books so like 95 percent of what i'm going to show you was purchased at dimple records in books and then i went to oakland for a baseball game last weekend and it was a day game so while i was in the bay area I decided to hit up a couple independent bookstores in the area, one in Oakland, um, Walden Pond Books in Oakland, and Mrs. Dalloway's Books in Berkeley on my way home. So I picked up a few things there as well. So I'm gonna start with the books that I purchased at Dimple Records during the, you know, the store closeout. I was basically looking for pretty much anything that I had interest in. Um, some of them are part of a collection. Some of them are just an author or a book that I'm interested in, in reading in the future. I'm not gonna go into great detail about each book, just kind of um, go through them. So, we're gonna start off with Tracy Chevalier's The Girl with the Pearl Earring. Earring, I read, uh, what is it called? Something Creatures, Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier a few months ago and I really loved it and The Girl with the Pearl Earring is her you know, most notable book. And so I have, I had a really battered old paperback copy of it that I got at a used bookstore and I ended up getting a really nice hardback for like 250. Now I have a collection of MC Beaton um, Agatha Raisin mysteries. So we have The Blood of an Englishman, Pushing Up Daisies, As the Pig Turns, and Something Borrowed, Something Dead. So the Agatha Raisin Mysteries are cozy mystery series featuring Agatha Raisin, a pretty early retired woman. I think she's only in her 50s. She retires to the Cotswolds in England, and she basically, she's she has too much brains and too much energy and zest for life to just sit around in retirement, so she keeps herself busy by solving mysteries. Um, now we have a couple, um, Every Man's Library. This is Ford Maddox Ford, The Good Soldier. No idea what this is about, but it's an English, uh, Every Man's Library edition, um, and it was like a dollar. And we have George Eliot's The Mill and the Floss, another English library, or I keep saying English library, Everyman's Library edition. And then we have The Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. This kind of looks like an Everyman's Library edition, but it's not. This is an old Borders edition. Oh, I miss Borders. Then we have John Irving, The Fourth Hand, a historical fiction of some sort, don't know. And we have a recent, I think this came out in 2018, The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. Well, I, had, I had seen many booktubers talking about this last year and then Simon Savage had an author on recently and I can't remember who it was. Uh, they were having a discussion, discussion and she was talking about how brilliant this book is and how brilliant Rachel Kushner's writing was and so it kind of re-interested, re-piqued my interest in this book. 
I don't know a lot about that one. I think that's the one that maybe takes place in a women's prison, I want to say. And then we have Severance by Ling Ma. <laughs> I had to double check that that wasn't actually a rip. That's a very realistic looking fake rip in the design there. Okay, those were the hardbacks. Um, we have, I think this is actually a British edition. Canada, it says can uh, Canada. Well, that's interesting. Really looks like a brand new edition of Terry Pratchett's The Weird Sisters. I wanna get into Terry Pratchett and I have heard that you know there's multiple places that you can jump into the story and that The Weird Sisters is a good place to start with um, the witches part of the storyline or cast or whatever. Um, we have this um, uh, Jason Reynolds Ghost. This is a middle reader book and this is on the Great American Read List and I found a really nice, um, it looks like never read copy um, of that for quite inexpensive. Um, so happy to have that. It's um, based on the cover, I'm gonna say that has to do with running and I'm a runner so uh, I mentioned that, oh, there's more running, there's more running on the back. So that'll be, that'll be a fun one to probably blaze through. Um, Russell at Ink and Paper Blog has recently been just banging on about Jacqueline Woodson, and if you haven't read her, you better read her. And so, okay, yes sir. So here is another Brooklyn from Jacqueline Woodson, and I think that is a gorgeous cover. Another book from the, Amer from the Great American Read list um, is a separate piece. I read this in seventh or eighth grade in school and I really liked it. It's a boarding school book. It reminds me a lot of uh, The Dead Poet Society with Robin Williams. And I haven't read this since seventh or eighth grade, um, whatever that is. And so I have a nice new edition of that. All these match. Here's How to Stop Time, beautiful together. How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. That still has, that's not supposed to happen. That still has a Barnes and Noble sticker on it. Uh, we have Garrison Keillor's Lake Wobegon, summer 1956. And this is in a penguin orange spine. Another pork penguin orange spine is Bridget Jones Diary, which I've never read, but I always enjoy the movie. Couple uh, Barbara King solvers. We have Animal Dreams, and The Bean Trees. So I recently read um, Unsheltered, which is her most current book, and uh, The Poisonwood Bible, who, which is her most well-known work. So picked up a couple more of hers and they're in um, like matching editions. So I like that. Uh, I have a science master, science fiction master, bleh, science fiction masterworks, Larry Niven's Ringworld. So I have, I think this is maybe my fourth one of these science fiction masterworks uh, that I have now. And we have Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse. Funny, when I went to Mrs. Dalloway's, which is of course based on a uh, Virginia Woolf book, Mrs. Dalloway, they didn't have any copies of any Virginia Woolf while I was in there. They had some Mrs. Dalloway related uh, uh, products like tote bags and t-shirts and socks and, and things like that, but they actually didn't have any copies of her, her books in. Um, but this one I got from Dimple Records. This is whatever 30% of $2.99 is, off of $2.99. And then we have this really nice uh, vintage um, classics edition of Richard Yates' Revolutionary Road. I've never read this, but this is the favorite or one of the favorites of Mercedes over at Mercy's, Mercy's Bookish Musings. So I picked this up when uh, I saw it was available and I love this cover. That's awesome. And I have Jesmyn Ward's Salvage the Bones. I read Sing Buried, uh, Sing Unburied Sing, I think in December, I wanna say of last year. It was one of the last books I read of last year and it was amazing. And so this one, so Salvage the Bones, Sing and Buried Sing, and there's another one, I wanna say the word line is part of it. They all take place in like the same area in Mississippi and they're a very loose trilogy, but they can all be read independently. And um, she writes horrible things so beautifully. 
and I was just, I just kept being stunned at the beautiful writing describing awful things. Um, so I really want to get to more of Jesmyn Ward. We have another Tracy Chevalier, The Last Runaway. So that's going to be another historical fiction. And we have E.M. Forster's Howard's End. This is in a Barnes & Noble Classics edition. And I have a couple Ian McEwans. I've never read Ian McEwan, and um, you know, I found these cheap. So we have Atonement and Saturday. And those are in, you know, matching editions. And then this one, um, I don't know, it just looked good. I picked it up. For some reason, it caught my eye. Um, winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, Gao Jinjiang, Soul Mountain. Um, 1983, Chinese playwright. Um, yeah. Epic Voyage of Discovery, this is supposed to be. So, yeah, that sounds good. Nice, chunky, nice, chunky guy. Um, has a translated Chinese work um, about a monk, it looks like. This is Pao by Mo Yan. Eric at The Lonesome Reader is always banging on about Joyce Carol Oates, and um, I picked up We Were the Mulvaney's by her. What is that stupid Oprah Book Club sticker. On one of those unremovable stickers, it's just printed right on the book, that's annoying. Anyhow, so that was all of my Dimple Records and Books haul. I love you Dimple Records, I'm going to miss you, you've been such a big part of my life. Um, so, bittersweet, but I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to use up my 80 some dollars in in store credit and, and bring these books into my into my home, into my personal library. So now I move on to um, a stack of books here from independent bookstores in the Bay Area, Bay Area. The first two were from Mrs. Dalloway's. I went there second <laughs> and um, and so I had already done some pretty good damage in um, in Oakland. So this one, I just, I like the cover and I read the back. This is Antoine Lorraine, Vintage 1954. Um, it's some sort of um, romp through France, I believed. And it looks like, this looks like this might be a series. There are others on the back here, the President's Hat, the Red Notebook, and French Rhapsody. So I don't know, I don't know anything about this really. So. And this is, what was neat at, at Mrs. Dalloway's, they had a lot of British copies or UK copies of books. And so this one is a UK copy. And not only can I tell because it has pounds on the back, but you can even tell just the feel of the book, particularly the thickness of the cover. I can tell that it's a UK edition. The other book I picked up at Mrs. Dalloway's in Berkeley was The Collected Schizophrenias. And this is out by Grey Wolf Press, which is also in the Bay Area. Mm. I'm not sure if it's San Francisco or Oakland, but the Bay Area. Next we have the stack of books that I got from Walden Pond Books in Oakland, and I could have spent all the money at that store. It was amazing. I had put pick, put the I put pictures of it up on my Instagram. It's one of those independent bookstores that has tons of staff recommendations and little write-ups and everything. So things, a lot of um, outfacing books so to draw your attention to them and uh, feature walls and, and everything I just I loved it and I picked up a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have ever come across this first one um, I love the cover this is the long ships by Franz G Bangston this is an extraordinary saga uh, of epic adventure on land and sea historical fiction and it's quite a it's quite a chunkster, um, but I'm thinking Vikings, and my husband is a my husband is Norwegian um, by heritage. His grandparents were from Norway, or his great grandparents were from Norway, and he said something to me yesterday. I don't remember what it was, but his answer was to uh, why whatever was because he's a Viking. So there you have it. Uh, and we have Ingrid Rojas Contreras, The Fruit of the Drunken Tree. 
I've heard good things about this and I just love that color co uh, cover. And then we have the much talked about Lanny by Max Porter, also out by Gray Wolf Press. And we have uh, Friday Black. I believe this is a short story collection. It's essays or short stories, but I think it's short stories. And I believe it's uh, short stories about essentially what it means to be black in, I think, America. Um, and uh, I've heard nothing but really good things about this collection. And we have Octavia Butler's Peril of the Sower. And I think that's an amazing cover as well. I am have an odd fascination with North Korea. And I have the, accu the accusation, Bandy, Forbidden Stories from Inside North Korea. And I also think that's an amazing cover. Bandy, a name derived from the Korean word for firefly, is a pseudonym for a writer who is still living in his homeland of North Korea. The accusation is his only published book to date. So he wrote this and uh, he had to smuggle it out of North Korea in order for it to get published. At obviously great uh, threat to his life and that of his family. And lastly, we have Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is a, I believe, like Native American urban fantasy, I think. Maybe some mystery romance um, in there as well. I've heard a lot of good things from a few people, including Mara over at Books Like Woe. And um, so I saw this and thought it was a good opportunity to pick it up. So in case you weren't counting, that was 40 new books added, added to my collection. Most of those being from the Dimple Records and Books um, store closing, close out using up my, um, using up my store credit. So I, I'm going to make it public. I don't intend to buy very many books for the rest of the year. Um, a few new, a few new releases here and there, um, really should be the only thing that I do pick up. Um, you know, the, the, can't think of it. The sequel to Poppy War, um, is coming out soon. Um, I have Cersei in paperback pre-ordered, um, and there's maybe a couple more. Um, I have my book of the month club, so that's typically one new book a month. So hopefully, um, I can just enjoy my large book collection with my new stack here. Thank you for joining me for this massive and bittersweet book haul. Let me know if there's any of these books in particular that you are really fond of that you think I should prioritize on my TBR. Um, let me know if you've been to Mrs. Dalloway's or Walden Books in Oakland, or if you have any other Bay Area or Northern California independent bookstores that you know of that I should check out. I am definitely looking um, to expand, uh, to expand my horizons because we have half price books and a couple used bookstores but I don't know of any independent bookstore in the area that sells new books. So that's what I'm really interested in, in getting to. Of course, I'm always into used books as well. So anyway, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for me. Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes. Mm -hmm.